Hey everyone, Josh here. Uh, doing a video on removing the after treatment system on the CKRA Passat for repair or replacement or diagnostic purposes. Um, yeah, so we're gonna move remove all of the components with the sensors so that they can be repaired. So first off, we're gonna go over a couple sensors while we're up here. Um, so this is your DPF here. You've got your Lambda sensor and two EGT probes. So that goes over to the far side here. So we're gonna unplug that, take that all together. Um, we have our DPF differential sensor. So that makes sure, or that basically tells the ECU how plugged it is or making sure it's not hollowed out. Um, so rubber lines that go over to here uh, and then it switches the steel where it goes into the DPF. It also goes up to this sensor, which then goes down to the bottom side. So we're going to un unplug all that, get that ready to be removed. And then underneath, um, let me see if I can't get a light in here. So this is the view from the, that's the DPF up there. Uh, that's your low pressure EGR right there. It goes into the cooler. Uh, this, on the CKRA Passats, the high pressure EGR is actually right off the manifold and goes into the head. So that's your only EGR line. Um, you've got your, let me zoom out here. That is your DEF injector or add blue injector, the wiring. Um, we've got a cat or the SCR, I'm not sure. The same thing there. And then we've got an exhaust flap right there to help with the regen. And we've got a joiner back there. So we're going to do it at the joiner back there. I am thinking about splitting it right here. But these bolts really don't look very nice. But so the plan is to get that DPF dropped out of there. I don't want to drop the subframe because that's where my jack stands are on. So I think we split it there, remove this back half off, and then maybe drop a uh, CV axle maybe and get enough room to get this DPF out of there. So that's just a quick overview of all the sensors. So now we're going to, I guess I'm going to try and figure out how we're going to tackle this and go from there. All right, so I'm gonna start at the back half. It's a lot cooler than the DPF right now. Um, so as you can see, I'm doing this in my garage. I haven't quite got nice, nice hoist set up yet. Um, so we're using jack stands on the subframe, um, especially with them being so high, it's kind of sketchy. So I like to stick wheels for tires underneath here. Um, that way, if it does slip, at least I don't get crushed, especially with nobody home other than myself. So yeah, safety first here, just really think about that. And then creepers are really nice, but you lose height. So I'm using a yoga mat. So yeah, when I get underneath, we're gonna try and get this uh, connector out first. The, um, the flange between the uh, DPF and the SCR and cat. So wish me luck. Okay, so my video skills underneath here are gonna kind of suck because I don't have a whole lot of room to obviously video. Um, but so this inside, let's try here, that inside nut is really close to the piping here, it's a really shitty spot, so flex sockets or swivel sockets are ideal here, you can't really get in there with a wrench very nicely, so you have your def injector, which I guess technically you can undo, uh, pretty rusty, so I don't want to touch that, so I've got this crack loose, kind of. And uh, yeah, soak them all penetrating oil. Um, that one, there's not really much left. The top one's gonna be golden, I think. So I'm not gonna film this because it's just uh, probably gonna bust my knuckles open here. Um, but yeah, swivel sockets are really nice. Uh, the other, this is just a snap one set that I have. 
Mastercraft set works really good too. It's a 12 mil I've got hammered on there. The other option is these removal, nut removal tools. They just gotta twist on. Then they grip, they work really good. So I think I'm gonna have to use that one for this bottom nut that there's not much left. So uh, just make sure you're kinda aware of this before you start. Okay, so as far as connectors for this back half, this electronic connector for the DEF injector, it's just got a little tab up here, and then should be able to wiggle it off. It's a little hard with one hand, so I'll maybe do that off camera. Um, the DEF line itself, I might not do it right now. I need a jug underneath it in case a little bit of DEF squirts out. Um, I don't really want that on me. But so it's got a little tab right where my thumb is, and then one just on the other side. So you just squeeze it together like that, and then you should be able to pop that off nice and easy. Um, shimmy down to the back side here. Take my light with me. We've got uh, an exhaust flap. That's just a normal Volkswagen connector. You push down there. Same kind of deal, shimmy it off. Might have to pry it a little bit. The road grime and stuff kind of gets all coated in there. And then after this flap, it's gonna make for some interesting video. Um, we've got a knock sensor there. So that harness goes up in there with the exhaust flap wiring and goes up to a little control box right there so this one's got a gray lock on it and then same kind of deal just kind of shimmy that off so I'm going to remove this control box with the lock sensor on the exhaust um, they can sometimes kind of get seized in there, so I'd rather do it on the floor rather than upside down and inside out. And then the band clamp for the exhaust. Of course, they put the nuts on the top side and they're all covered in salt and gravel and crap. Um, I don't think that's gonna go very nicely, but same kind of deal. Um, just gonna loosen that off and hopefully bang it one way or the other. Uh, the other option would be cut it, but I'm not sure at this moment if that's just a regular bang clamp or if it's like a tapered one or how that works yet. So I'm hoping to save that. So I'll continue on. So I don't think I'm going to be able to get the camera in here to film this while taking it apart. Um, but so from underneath here, I've already got the CV boot cover off and the CV shaft is just hanging down here loose. Um, so I'm going to take this low pressure EGR line off. So it's just got a little clamp right here and then right here onto the cooler. I'm gonna get this out. I think it should make it a bit easier to squeak the DPF out around this tight area here. And then on the front side. Come on. You've got an EGT sensor there. Um, it's clipped onto the subframe. I've already popped it off, so then it's just this orange plug, orange plug here. Um, yeah, there's nothing too special about it. Um, just a normal Volkswagen style connector, so yeah, nice and simple. Um, I'm gonna undo all that stuff and then I guess I'll probably film from above here and take some more plugs and stuff off. Okay, so I got a terrible camera angle here, uh, so I'll just kind of explain what we're doing here. So I was just gonna take the clamp off the differential pressure sensor here, but I figured out it's a lot easier just to take the whole bracket off of the engine mount. So there's two pretty big triple square bits that hold the uh, bracket onto the engine mount. So once that's undone, the whole bracket, everything can get out of the way. It's a lot cleaner and kind of frees up a little bit more room. So once you have that out of the way, you also want to unbolt the EGR differential pressure sensor. 
So you kind of have to take that heat shield off that I'm doing right now and just unbolt that one bolt and it's nice and free. Um, and then you got these three wires going to the driver's side here for the uh, Lambda and the two EGT sensors. So just kind of lay the wiring over and then you're good to go. Okay, so here's our three sensors that we just undid over there. And if I just remove this entire bracket, because it's got two bolts facing downwards, so this whole DPF differential sensor is off. Um, this one's over here. So now, all I've got is this tiny Allen on the V-band clamp, and 13 mill head bolt down there. And then there's two on the bottom I undid before I came up here. So that should be it holding that on. So hopefully you get it undone and it falls out nicely. Okay, so up next is taking the V-band clamp off. So this one was quite rusty. So once you got the little Allen bolt loosened off, um, the V-band still gonna be kind of sandwiching together. Um, so you can either take a little flat screwdriver to kind of pry the, I guess the V off of the uh, turbo and the downpipe, or a little hammer and a little pry bar just to kind of knock it, just to kind of break the rust free. So it's not rocket science, but yeah, they can get stuck on there pretty tight. So I've kind of got it sitting in here really bad. Um, that's the bottom. That's the top up there. It's kind of came down so far and it's getting jammed up. Um, gonna take the bolt off for this bottom mount. This should give us more room to play. I didn't realize that was removable. So I'm gonna pop that off and hopefully have enough room to kind of shimmy it out the back. I The other option would be pull this drive shaft, but I don't want to do it quite yet. So we'll see what happens. All right, so I took the drive shaft out. <laughs> so now we're gonna try and see if we can't wiggle this out here again. So I think we're almost home free here. Uh, it's really tight for this top bracket to fit through the trans tunnel here. And this EGT um, sensor has to come out to clear steering rack and subframe. Of course, it's stripped out, so use a bit of heat if you're taking that apart. Um, but yeah, I'm hoping to, should just fall out now. Um, it's kind of hard to film, like I said earlier, so I'll just, uh, See if it slides out here now. So it just kind of falls out once you have it worked back far enough and away from the heat shield. And uh, there we go, to kind of get all the cables out. Okay, so here's everything out. So we'll go over stuff. It's a little bit easier to see here. Uh, so again, DPF differential sensor that was up near the um, coolant ball. So it feeds into these hard lines, which this one, this would be your pre DPF pressure. <clears throat> and this would, this, um, teed one would be your after um, the after DPF uh, pressure sensor that, as that comes down there goes into the sensor there and there's also this line here which I'd miss taking apart so that goes that's teed into the low pressure EGR so I guess that's just uh, seeing if the EGR is working correctly as well the low pressure um, two EGT sensors um, Lambda or Knox sensor, probably a Knox sensor. Um, that Knox sensor down there. Exhaust flap. And your duff injector. So pretty simple setup. So now you can uh, go get your system repaired or replaced or whatever you're doing with it. Um, yeah, just thought I'd make a quick and easy video on removing it. Uh, if you can get it out, you can obviously get it back together. So yeah, this will be the end of the video. So thanks for watching.